In this quick tip, I'm going to show you how to link a morph influence to a deformer in Modo. So uh, what I've got here is a cylinder which has got two bones inside it uh, and uh, they've already been bound together. So if I select one bone and activate the rotate tool, you can see as I rotate the bone that the cylinder is being deformed. So uh, the next thing I've created is a morph influence which creates a very basic bulge and if I um, increase the strength of the morph influence to 100 you can see that it bulges this cylinder. So what I want to do is um, to link the two so that when I rotate this bone the cylinder bulges. Um, and there's two ways of doing this so I'm just going to zero everything out first. First way of doing this that I'm going to show you is to use a schematic view. This is probably the most straightforward way uh, but it's slightly less flexible and the second way of doing it is to use a relationship with a channel links window and you can set keys and also uh, create a curve which is going to control exactly how the deformation happens but the channel links is a little bit more fiddly but so uh, I'm going to show you the um, schematic view solution first so what I need to do is to grab my uh, skeleton joint if uh, if you just grab, if you just select your skeleton in the uh, viewport and then if your hierarchy is collapsed just hover over the item list and hit the F key and that will reveal your selected item for you. So it's a, it's a quick way of finding things in the item list. And uh, I'm going to grab the rotation X channel so I'm just highlighting it here in the properties and then finding it in the channels and then just dragging that channel out into the schematic view. Then I'm going to select the morph influence and I'm going to find the strength drag that into the schematic view. So what we need to do is to create a multiplier between these two. So um, I am going to go back to my bone and I'm going to rotate it 90 roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect but I can see in the channels there's 90. Um, and now I'm going to drop my rotate tool. I'm going to go to add modifier math basic math multiply and what I need to do is grab the rotation X and drag that into value A, drag the output into the strength of the morph map, and now I need to find a suitable value B. So if I highlight the value B in the channels and then go over the viewport, hit the C key, that is going to bring up the channel hall tool, which means I can do this interactively. So I'm just going to left click and drag in the uh, channel hall tool to find something that I like. So minus 0 0.01 seems to be a good multiplier so now I'm going to drop my um, channel hall tool and value B is now hardwired into this assembly. You can see it's here in the schematic view. So what happens now is if I grab this bone and activate the rotate tool you can see that as I rotate the bone the morph is being driven by uh, the rotation. Now this is really easy to set up as you can see, really straightforward. The only drawback is I can't apply a curve to this. So um, I'm going to show you the second way of doing this. Um, first of all let me just zero out this rotation and I am going to disconnect this, um, this uh, schematic. So in order to create the relationship with the channel links window uh, what you need to do is to select your driven item first, in which case this is the morph influence, and then select your driver next, so hold down control and in the item list click on the skeleton joint and then go to layout palettes and then locate the channel links window and that is going to have your driver in one on one side and your morph influence uh, on the other. Now if for any reason uh, the items aren't um, selected, I'll just show you what you can do. You go to Layout, Palettes, uh, Channel Links and this brings it up empty so you can you can do them one by one if you like. So let's uh, click on the uh, skeleton joint in the item list and just load driver and then the morph influence in the uh, item list and then load driven. Same thing really but it's quicker if you pre-select because then it populates the channel links window for you. So what we need to do is find the rotation X in the, uh, in the skeleton joint and the strength in the morph uh, influence. So hold down control and then select the strength here. 
and we don't want a direct link we need a relationship so make sure you click on relationship and next thing you do is add link and that brings up this interface for you in the viewport at this point you can dismiss the channel links window you don't need it anymore what we need to do is to set keys to uh, drive the uh, the relationship now it can actually be a little bit confusing to use the channel links interface so it's important to be careful and methodical here set your first key first that's really crucial so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter minus 90 here and you can see it interactively brings this up in the viewport and I'm going to set my strength to 100 now you can see this when I did that this yeah this little square here turned yellow that means that uh, the key is ready to be set so if you click on the square that has set the key for you and it's turned back to white and uh, the second key should already be set because it's the default state but if you wanted to do something different here you enter different values but at this point we've done what we need to do and it's actually um, underneath the morph influence if you if you click on this little uh, plus sign you'll see it's added the relationship to the morph influence so at this point press spacebar this is important to dismiss this uh, channel links interface because if you don't dismiss it you're in danger of setting keys without meaning to so press the spacebar to dismiss this interface and if I now select this uh, skeleton joint you can see that once again it's driving the morph influence but the great thing about using the channel links is that now we can um, we can uh, use a curve to control exactly how the morph is being driven so I'm going to zero out this joint once again uh, and again it's important when using the channel links I think to to keep everything in default state select the relationship um, here in the item list and uh, at, when it brings up the uh, the window and if it doesn't bring up the window you may need to hit space when you uh, select it and now click on the graph and what we're going to do is we're going to change this curve so let's say we want the, the the deformation to happen sooner well let's just bring up this curve right here and then once again dismiss the uh, channel links interface click on the on the bone bring up the rotation tool and you can see now the deformation is happening almost as soon as we start rotating once again I'm going to zero this out and uh, make sure I've dropped my tool uh, click on the relationship once again and let's try a different graph this time we're going to make the deformation happen really really late by making the curve go like this once again make sure you drop the channel links interface by pressing space and select the bone bring up the rotate tool and this time when I rotate the deformation is going to happen really really late and there you can see so with the channel links um, you've got a lot more flexibility it's just a little bit fiddlier to use the interface but once you get used to it you should be okay so um, that's a morph driven by a deformation I hope you found it um, helpful and thank you very much for watching